Okay, hi everyone. Thanks for your patience. We're just running a little bit late today. Um, so I am now switching from, um, I, I was the commissioner of the Global Art Forum. I'm now here to uh, sit in for Chris Fussner. Uh, Chris is the uh, mastermind behind the Art Dubai Digital section next door, but also these um, talks uh, which are named after the uh, very generous sponsorship uh, by Bybit, um, and some of you may know um, Bybit, and there's a whole culture behind Bybit, which is very, very fascinating. But I think one of the, um, there are different uh, ambitions that Chris had for these talks, um, uh, and perhaps they could loosely be uh, grouped under the notion of, of education. Uh, we're in a uh, we're in a, a, a context where maybe the, the majority of you have heard something about uh, things that are happening in this space, in this culture, uh, but you don't necessarily know um, a great amount of detail, and maybe you're curious about that. So, you know, some of the talks are, uh, I think, about showing the breadth of what's happening in the space, um, also trying to get past the sometimes intimidating hurdle of uh, what do specific words, um, uh, not even words, even acronyms mean. But I know another impulse that was very important for Chris is to um, stress the fact that when it comes to this, um, this term NFT or NFT art, um, that we don't make the mistake to assume or that it is uh, that it somehow just arrived out of nowhere, that it, it is in fact the latest chapter in a much longer uh, history of chapters that you might call something like digital practices or digital art or digital cultures, and um, and with that in mind, it was uh, very very important to Chris that he invite um, Postmasters Gallery to be part of uh, the, uh, the exhibiting uh, initiatives next door, but that also we have an opportunity to hear um, directly from one of the co-founders of Postmasters Gallery, and that's uh, Tamash uh, Banovich. Um, so Postmasters is a contemporary art gallery uh, that was founded in 1984. Uh, it's been representing cutting edge contemporary artists working with digit, and they've been working with digital artists since 1991. And they, um, a, a year ago, launched Postmasters Blockchain. Um, and that has been presenting current and historical digital art NFTs. Uh, so how this is going to work is I've asked uh, Tamash to put together Quite intuitively, and I've, um, uh, from the brief time that I've got to know Tamash, uh, I believe Tamash is quite an intuitive intelligence um, and also a great conversationalist. He's going to introduce us to uh, give a, a glimpse into the richness of this space, of this world, of this history. And then I have a number of questions that are, are going to follow up and, and try and dig a little bit deeper. And of course, we'll open it up to you. Uh, so to get things going, will you please join me in welcoming Tamash Banovic? Thank you. So I, I gather that you all here because exactly as Shimon said that you know something about uh, this NFT, which is uh, swirling in the air and 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 whipping people into frenzy, some people into frenzy, and, 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 and uh, but there is, there is a um, difficulty of understanding it, but I think my task is, uh, so I'm just as excited and I'm just as uh, sometimes disoriented as I participate in this new movement, uh, just, just like everybody else, because it's very difficult to define these things, and the definition is shifting all the time. Uh, um, but I'm tasked with kind of give a, a historical 
a more historical view. I'm not a historian, so I'm not, I, I, I don't like to talk about what I do so much, but I'm not, I don't feel qualified to introduce you the history of it. I just can tell you what we have done in the last 30 years, which is pretty much entails most, most of the history uh, of, of, of digital art, because basically, when you talk, when, uh, you talk uh, about NFTs, as, especially as it relates to art, uh, then basically you're talking about digital art delivered with the technology of NFTs. I mean, the, the, the original problem of, of, of it, the introduction of, an, uh, of digital art and, and, uh, and, and, and kind of dissemination of it was actually that the technology was great for, for creative endeavors, but the, the the, but the technology of delivery, as always, uh, lagged behind. I mean, if you, uh, all this, most of art is, and, uh, is happening that way, that the ideas come first and then somehow people find and the artists find the tools how to how to uh, express themselves with some some sort of technology because every every art is made with some sort of technology and and then then they find the channels to deliver it and uh, and I think what happened is in the last couple of years that the nfts were, became a, a, a kind of a, a optimal delivery tools, and also the uh, uh, at the same time, the, it created a new market and it reached a new audience, and, uh, which is already kind of digital. And um, so, so I just. You know, it's it when when you when you um, encounter something like this, it's nobody knows. So I I I, um, I, I can tell you how I got into it. Uh, the gallery was always interested in what is contemporary, and 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 our interest was very general in that sense. We just wanted to understand contemporary art, what is contemporary, where it's coming from, what is the cultural background of it, what, what are the motivations. So we always uh, were very engaged in, 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 uh, in this, this contemporary uh, environment and space. And, and uh, I basically, I, I wish I would say differently, but I, you know, we basically stumbled into the, uh, the in a way, into uh, digital art because uh, it's a little anecdote. You know, I, I had a very interesting. Uh, uh, I, I just started to know a, a very interesting artist and and uh, who was working with environmental issues and very interestingly, when when it was totally unknown and 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 on. Explored, he was already doing this kind of experiments and, and different ways of of approaching and and uh, and putting into different contexts environmental issues, which are resurgent now as well. And uh, and he suddenly disappeared, uh, and I couldn't find him. And and I finally uh, tracked him down, and and I said I want to go for a studio visit. And uh, I go, went to his house, and he said, you know, I, I asked, what, so what are you doing? What are you doing for not two years? He said, I am on the internet. And, uh, and uh, there was no internet. <laughs> I mean, there was an internet, so something you could hear about it, but it didn't exist. There was no browser, and there was just, uh, just a few. I mean, it was a scientific tool to communicate, basically, nothing else. So I went to this house, and, and he had this modem, which was each time had to start up, and it was like unbelievably slow. And, uh, and nothing was uh, 
prepared for it, so it constantly dropped, it, <laughs> dropped you off, the, off of the line. And we spent like four or five hours, and, and basically most of the time we went on the, tried to get on the internet, and, and then he was showing me on the computer screen some databases and, and that how he navigates it. And I, and, and I said, okay, but this is, so what, what does it have to do with art? And, uh, and, and I, after a while, I left because I, I, I realized that I can't, <laughs> he, he couldn't articulate it. Mm -hmm. but, but when I, but, so that's how I first encountered it. And then, uh, interestingly enough, there was, uh, it turned out there was already a whole um, kind of community of people who were on the internet. And that's where I understand, so, what is the relation to art? Basically, this was the first moment when artists inter uh, internationally could communicate and, and, dis and exchange ideas and discuss ideas. And, uh, and, uh, Can you remember <laughs> what year this might have been? Well, roughly? it was, I think, 93, 94. And, and this community was called The Thing. I mean, there were other communities already on the, on the internet, the well and then some other places, but, but this was specifically uh, uh, created by artists, for artists, and, and they really seriously discussed uh, art issues, just, mm -hmm. just different than what is communication and, and, what, is, uh, and what, is di what is digital art, because obviously, uh, not obviously, but, but uh, there was digital art way before, you know, in the, since the, ever since yeah. there was computer, there was digital art. And uh, because it was a tool to basically visualize uh, and communicate things and create things. And at the beginning, it was all computational, so it was more like a geometric uh, computational things, and then later uh, images, what you couldn't uh, create otherwise because they were too complex or, or later on animations, uh, complex animations. But, but this was um, the beginning of something else because, because uh, this was pretty much at the time when uh, personal computers started to appear, you know, these little boxes, Apple computers. And, uh, and, uh, and so this tool suddenly was, was accessible, somewhat accessible to artists, and artists immediately were pushing the boundaries of all these technologies and programs which were possible there. And um, actually, I mean, that was the time when I kind of really consciously went after this thing, because, I, because at the same time, by 94, 95, uh, suddenly there was a huge, besides the uh, kind of a, a, an economic downturn, but there was a huge, diff, huge change in, 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 um, in everybody's life. Uh, suddenly, uh, loud, uh, you know, majority of the workers started to sit in front of a screen. Uh, you know, before that, there was nothing like that. There was a typewriter and a, and a you know, a mechanical computation machine, or maybe it was, you know, buttons. And, but, but it was, uh, uh, but suddenly there was this computer and, uh, and it totally changed the whole world. So I was interested uh, that how does it reflect in art? But, and that's, that's, that's basically how I, I channeled my interest after this original encounter. And uh, the idea was that... Sorry uh, to interrupt, yeah. uh, Tamás, but I'm wondering, I mean, I think if we were to look at any of that net art mm -hmm. um, from today, looking back, it would look um, quite simple or crude in the sense that the c computing power at that point was um, obviously it was better than it was in the 80s or the 70s, but it was still right. quite crude. I mean, you're talking about dial-up internet. Right. Um, 
And, um, but now, I mean, last, I, last time I was in MoMA, which was just before the pandemic, I had a tour by Stuart Coma, and they had, you know, I think they had Jody there. Like, it was interesting, they had, uh, MoMA had already acqu had acquired some of the seminal net art from the early mm -hmm. 90s. And, you know, they were now displaying them in the, in the galleries. And it felt like, um, uh, again, because enough time has passed. I mean, they're, they're extremely charming, but they have this quality of almost like primitivism <laughs> compared to the sort of technology that we have on, on here. But can you say something about the, what, what made you attracted to the fact that artists were using this? Was it the fact that you thought... I mean, was it the art itself, or did you think um, something interesting was going to come from the fact that artists were now dealing with this technology? I think very much that, that I, I, I saw a future in I mean, I, I future, wanted to be, yeah. you know, at that time, I just wanted to be part of, of this something new, what was happening, because I had this feeling that this is, uh, this, since the word changed, it has to be reflected yeah. in this art, and so the I was probably interested in the potential and also the, the you know, today there is a, so much uh, about uh, people speak in an NFT world about community. Yeah. But, uh, but this was a, a community of artists who were like of interest because right now community means uh, very often, most likely it means some sort of financial. Yeah. <laughs> common financial interest, which, which comes from the nature of the NFTs, which is connected to transactions, basically. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I think it was the potential, mostly. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, we were very excited in every, you know, every little development. And, and once the browsers appeared, and once there were these uh, the personal computers unbelievably fast uh, uh, there was a, an incredible uh, acceleration of, of, of technology. So yes, the modem was very slow and the computers did very little, but month by month, yeah. there was huge leaps of, 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 uh, of progress. And uh, basically, it, the problem was actually that, that people were so uh, consumed by, the, by keeping up that the, the kind of the never had the time to reflect on it or or or, or go into it too much. So it was. It was the other like thing a, is we, we sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. but it's just uh, technology only seems primitive when we look back on it. I mean, when we live through it, uh, it is uh, in the present moment. It's usually astonishing, you no, know, because we're comparing yeah. it to what we had from before. So what we see is something mm -hmm. that's much better. Um, but then in these longer arcs of time, we look back, no? And, um, and I'm sure at some point we will think of these as very primitive uh, devices, <laughs> right? Um, sorry I to interrupt. I can't imagine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so just to go back a little bit uh, uh, chronologically yeah. uh, of our history, because actually I, when I at that time, I realized that we, we already, for, for three, four years since 91, showed digital art. Mm -hmm. Like, this is an example of it, this artist, who is, uh, I just didn't understand. This artist did these computers. These were computers, but the yeah, computers used to have these big um, circuit boards. Like, now you have those tiny little chips. The computers have these, like, huge, circuit boards which you had to pull out so and they were printed and so he did this comp this, this is a computer but the circuit is is at, at the same time the graphic of it so the petition and all the stuff all those lines and and connections they are actually the functioning part of the computer and on the others and other side of it there are these millions of it or diodes and whatever technology and uh, and they were actually very, very interesting uh, artworks then mm -hmm. because he, like this one was a petition, so you could sign a, a I don't remember what was the, it about, but, but you actually could sign a petition and it calculated and, and, 
and added up the the, the votes. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I think it, it at some point it changed the function of it. So it was uh, it was conceptually already very sophisticated. And he also uh, I think there is the cream. Yeah. Uh, the, here is a little bit closer. I, I can't read it. Yeah. Anyway, so sign below if right. disappointed. Right. And and but this was like a, an amazing technological yeah. Yeah. advance. You actually could sign on it, or, or or you could display a text, which was then changing. Yeah. It, it was basically interactive art already. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and uh, this is what. Again, it like, seems like super primitive today, but it was a uh, it was a beautiful little piece that you could have and uh, and wear, and this was showing every day how much you lived. Who was this? Uh, it was. Um, Do you remember? Oh my God, um, Mark Madel. Mark Madel. Mark Madel. He totally. Yeah, he was he was out, almost outside of the art world, yeah. and he was creating these things. And there were computers you could lift it, and then you take away of the life of the computer. So you had to make a decision, and uh, and uh, and it had a certain lifespan. And uh, when it was over, it died, and then you just had a dead object. So it was very. Even though the, he used this very simple technology to very profound ends at the end. This reminds me of something, uh, Tamash. Mm -hmm. the, uh, on Kawara, you know, uh, we mostly know him for the date paintings, right. but he also did something else very ritualistic, which was send postcards. And he always, wherever he was, wherever he would go, and then, but on the back it would say, there was a stamp, I think, and it just said, I am still alive. <laughs> I wanted to I'm say still that. alive. Right? Yes, Which it's is my really favorite fun. thing. So <laughs> good. Still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. it sort of reminds me. And of that. and I think he actually did a, a version of it that that he set up an email oh, really? system that that he sent up to this later replacing the the cards which sent out an email and it actually sent out emails huh. past his lifetime. Oh, uh, beyond, beyond, from beyond. Beyond his lifetime. Yeah. So so these were the ones I it, I, I was oh sorry. I was uh, showing this in 91. Like this one is a, a totally interactive piece again. It was kind of a clock, and, and, but you could also, you could control on those pads, but you could on, only do it if there were two people and they were holding hands. Huh. So, so again, it was you know, using this means and, and to, to like very, you know, interesting yeah. and new ideas. And I think interactivity was one of the, the basic uh, new ideas then that, uh, that was emerging and, and he was very early on a proponent of it. But anyway, so, uh, so just to go back to a little bit to the history uh, of it, after like a couple of years of, of, of uh, kind of discovering people and artists all over the place, and I really made an effort to, because there was a certain movement by then uh, uh, that they tried to put together, and it still happens actually now, I think, NFTs. Again, it's a scheme that they put together a technologist and an artist. So mm -hmm. the artist had no idea, usually, the technology, but, but, but they would work together. And I, I always thought that, thought that it, uh, it's a weird idea because because there were artists whose 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 uh, whose uh, natural tool was this technology, and I thought that that is uh, that they didn't have to go through this hurdle of learning the tool because that was their natural tool. So I was I was looking for all these uh, artists, and and um, since uh, it was. Um, by, by then, it was like a revolution, like today. Everybody was talking about digital, digital uh, 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 magazines, like Wired started. And so there was a digital culture emerging. So, so there were many participants, and not necessarily 
the, uh, kind of uh, all of them fine artists because there were graphic designers who actually created a new language and new typefaces and new new ne uh, navigation. You know, then the 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 internet emerged and the first visual browsers emerged, and so you could actually put together text and, and images on a page and you could navigate it. And, uh, and these were amazing, they, they gave amazing opportunities. And, and, they, they, and there was this, um, this you know, def and, and I tried to define uh, what makes something digital, mm. because there was a lot of things which basically uh, replicated other ideas by digital means. And, and uh, interestingly enough, after kind of eliminating and, and, and kind of analyzing different digital works, I ended up that the purest, the only pure digital art form was the screensavers. Mm. And I don't know, probably most of you don't even know what screensavers are. Those are, I mean, you probably have seen them, but you don't know that. Them, that's when the, your computer goes to sleep and there is something moving on it. And, uh, and at that time, it actually had a very clear function because the screens, mm. if there was something shown on a screen for a long time, it burned it into the screen and it, you could... And, and so it, it destroyed the screen. Destroyed you know? the screen after a while. Like, for example, like if it all night it was on with the same thing, or maybe not, not uh, forever, but at least for a day, you could see this, this uh, after image. So they they came up with this um, uh, with the screensaver, which basically was a moving an, an animation. But the interesting thing was about it that there was no, it wasn't a, a movie. So there there was actually no image or no no movie. There was no and nothing uh, pre-recorded. It was a computer program. Which had certain parameters, and and it was running and, and generating real time, real uh, in real time, uh, uh, an animation, which looked like an animation, and uh, the other thing was besides that, of course, when you uh, on the uh, it was linking that that you basically could click on something and link and create a narrative, which was not linear. So you could actually have a non-linear narrative, which, is, which has existed forever. People were trying to figure out how to create such a non-linear narrative, but, but there was no technology for it. Uh, and so I, I, in 96, I, I made this show, Can You Digit, <laughs> it was called. And uh, let me see if. It's very weird because I thought that my first image was something else. Is this the first image? Anyway, it will come up and I will show yeah. you. Uh, it was, I put together a show of, uh, of um, oh, it's there, uh, of, um, of 25 artists. And uh, there were 25 stations, and and uh, and each one was just playing one thing. So it was a it was a huge show. Actually, it was a um, total miscalculation. But since nobody had any experience how to do a digital show, uh, uh, it it took probably like six hours if you wanted to <laughs> <laughs> see how that works. But uh, but it, this was basically the first digital art show in New York and probably anywhere because there were some technology shows before, but there was never a, a show uh, which focused on digital art. Uh, so that was the first first show and um, it was amazing because because just like now there was so much uh, so much enthusiasm that that there was uh, people were standing in lines around the block. I right. don't know, thousands of people came right. to the opening, so most of them could never come in. And, and uh, because there was so much excitement and, and, uh, and well, that was very inspiring also. Mm -hmm. And, and um, 
so the next show we did is, was this show, which was exactly about what I said before, that, that there was such an acceleration in technology that people were spending all their time trying to catch up. So I, I came up with this idea that, uh, that, you know, that I will do a show which forces people to, to slow down. And uh, so I bought up, like, you could buy for nothing, like 50 of these little Mac minis. And uh, Mac, Mac, Mac minis, they were Mac classics. I'm sorry. Mac classics. And, and I, I gave every artist a, a Mac classic. And, uh, and I told them that to, to make an art in this. Mm. And, and they actually already varied very much. Some of them didn't even have a hard drive. They had uh, these floppy disks. And so, so their capabilities were like minimal. But, but, but yeah, I wanted to focus on that, that force people to do something with that nothing and go back a little bit and, and explore it. And it was uh, a fantastic show. People came up with amazing things. There were self-driving computers. This was a, a, a variable computer, <laughs> these two things. Uh, there were, uh, uh, you mentioned Jody. Well, Jody was a very interesting thing. It, it's interesting you say it's, uh, it looks primitive. Because basically, uh, they were um, trying to express this, first, this idea that people were basically totally confused with the computer. Right. They didn't know what to do with it, where to click, how to navigate. And it was basically a very frustrating experience to work with computers. Yeah. And they, they created this aesthetic. And they made the, made this, uh, uh, made the computer do just like horrible things. <laughs> <laughs> you went one of their websites and it just went berserk yeah. and started to replicate itself. Instead of one cursor, there were 50 cursors and, they, and you didn't know which one you are running. But at the same time, there was, there was a beauty, on, a oh, beauty in it. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so it was... Um, Perhaps what I mean by primitive, it's not that the artwork was primitive, it's yeah. just the, the interface, no? yeah. the resolution of that, of that particular yeah, Mac, yeah, they were like, right, was ex quite I mean, crude. I, I'll show a few things, and the reason they are so tiny, because that's how, yeah. how uh, the resolution of the images was. Uh, like Joe did for this thing, he did this program where, again, you didn't know where to click it, how to, how to navigate it, and then he also made a, a, a mouse pad, which was a mattress which had like dimps in it so <laughs> the old old mouses were mechanical so it was yeah. rolling so if yeah so it was it was crazy but very interesting uh, ideas and very diverse ideas and um, um, one of the points what I wanted to say that what you see today, and, and people are so excited about NFTs, that this is a brand new, it's a revolution, and it's, everything is new, and the technology, I mean, the ideas are new, and, and they invent something. Uh, it, it, none of it is actually new. Hmm. I mean, here, is a, here is a piece. Uh, uh, it was an interactive uh, 3D environment in 98 or something where you could uh, you know the the that body was the kind of the the object of interaction and you touched the body and that that kind of dra drove the the story it was basically a, a kind of a game uh, and uh, it was quite sophisticated there was already uh, ai uh, artificial intelligence built into it. And the same person later did this work, which was two heads mm. talking to each other. And it was still, it was pure AI. You know, one, one, there were questions, you know, half of the text was, was, uh, was in it, and half of the, and the AI was basically talking to a, a person mm -hmm. at that time. And, and, uh, also, uh, there was a so there was a lot going on, and then 
it, it actually had a renaissance, mm -hmm. uh, digital art. So it's not like, like uh, it just emerging because in the early 2000s, before, uh, before uh, institutions uh, became kind of uh, captured by other interests and they were more independent, uh, they were very interested in it. Uh, we had several works of, of, of the artists we work with in the Whitney Biennial. This was in the Whitney Biennial. There was, there were uh, interact uh, this kind of uh, uh, virtual reality environments already, and all kinds of works uh, in the museums and 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 uh, and institutions at that time. Uh, so. Uh, I mentioned before a little bit that uh, that, that when when uh, the thing emerged that there was a really high level conversation on it, and uh, uh, this is a very interesting piece uh, by Maciej Wisniewski, who was a who was a who was like a kind of a network genius. He worked at IBM, so he understood the the. the network uh, basically to the extent how we understand it to, right. today, the yeah. different layers, the dark net, the, the, how these uh, different uh, worlds created and how, how companies uh, create walls around it. But this work was very interesting because it was revealing that as the internet uh, progressed, basically the quality of the information and the dialogue uh, kind of decrease decreased yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's called three seconds of the internet and he basically uh, picked three seconds almost randomly of different ages of the internet as as you know everything almost everything or everything i don't know anymore it was uh, archived okay. what was on the internet so basically uh, you could reach back, and he just reached back to uh, one second, what was in one second in the internet. So that first line on the top is, is the earliest, and there was a very interesting intellectual almost text always going, or at least substantial text. And then there is a, the, a, a mid-generation layer of it, where, where it's kind of like, much more fluffier, it's still text mostly. And then in the back there was this uh, internet which was uh, already, well, it was a long time ago, but there already it was a multimedia internet. There were images and commercial, it was totally commercialized and, and, and so the, the quality and the kind of degraded very much. So it was like a very interesting work. Tomasz, just so you know, we have about 10 minutes left, okay? Okay. So, let me just let me just go through these things a little bit. Yeah. Not every everything is legible, but uh, um, just to uh, just to I, I basically why I just put this together to understand how rich it is. Yeah. So so then games came in and the game technology came in and. Uh, and people were, uh, uh, in, uh, including that technology, but there was a lot of thoughtful, thoughtful works, you know, which were reflecting on it. Like, for example, this was a, this is actually a talking head. It was put together all from, I think, Warcraft, uh, uh, Warcraft? figures. Yeah. And it was talking about, uh, it was a monologue of a boy who, who was adopted by a Christian family, like a fundamentalist family, and, the, and his father told him that he can't play uh, games anymore because there are demons and, and unpure thoughts. And, and then he's trying to talk to his friends and discuss it, whether she could pay, play or it, the father is just jealous. It's a beautiful piece. And, uh, and uh, another other uh, genre which, which uh, was uh, emerging was machinima, when the idea was that, that uh, artists uh, collected uh, different games 
And instead of playing the games, they used the game as a, as a, as a way to create a movie. So they used the characters and the setting, mm. but they, they created their own movies within it. And they, they played different, uh, the game until it was doing what they wanted to, their character to do, hours and hours. And then, then they created the, the different um, uh, scenes. And then they, you know, as a digital video, and then they edit it together. This one is, uh, is, is by Ido Stern. Uh, he was, it was a, a movie about the loss of innocence of Israel. It was collect, he had a collection, a huge collection of different games, very often like obscure games because people used to do themselves games. And, and so it starts when, you know, with this very simple uh, graphic games that they're building Israel and they, you know, they're singing and everything is great and then ends up with this, uh, with a sequence where, where the first Israeli commandos, commandos go to execute some chic, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, so it was very interesting that it was uh, that they used these aesthetics for. So, uh, anyway, it's a genre which was very much present. Uh, there is another one here. This is actually a video where uh, where um, is that Lara Croft? It's by Miltos Manetas. It's a Lara Croft game. Which is all about, of course, the, these games were about about achieving something and 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 and, uh, and surviving things and 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 advancing and and here Lara Croft basically trying to commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> so there is this gauntlet Very scene, relate, relatable. and, and she is like uh, she is trying to die. And it actually takes like five minutes before <laughs> before she can be <laughs> hit a, hit a, uh, uh, by these rockets, and so it's like a very uh, kind of sad, reflective thing about it, about the whole idea of that these games were violent, and, and, you yeah. know, and, but uh, but it was kind of a. Uh, uh, how do they say it? That, uh, um, that you want to achieve something and, 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 and survive. So this is a uh, this is one of the these machinimas. Or he did another one where uh, Super Mario was sleeping because the whole Super Mario uh, game was about Super Mario was running around all the time and totally. Uh, and right, it's super active. So he, he made like a he made him sleep for like 15 <laughs> minutes, and these birds that, are that flying nice. around, or, and, and butterflies make him fall asleep, and Ooh. birds flying around, people outside, and he just sleeps. And uh, okay, so uh, th this is this is how, how much time we have? Uh, about. I mean, I'd like to ask. Yeah, yeah. The, okay. the audience to anyway, some questions. So, yeah, ten minutes, so there was a, a huge activist movement on the internet, and, and, and we worked with, with these people. The, it's this, this was toy war. This was basically when, when uh, the cor corporate world was really taking over the internet, and these people, uh, they wanted to take away this group's name. Uh, and, and, and they organized a huge group of of activists, lawyers, and, and, and people, and they basically, within a year, that company went uh, bankrupt, actually, uh, because, because they got such a bad publicity. And, uh, yeah, and they had this war chambers and everything. It was a very interesting thing, and all those, those, all those, all those, Big uh, pipes. They were basically represented the network mm -hmm. that they are connected, but they were mobile, so they were moving around the world. These containers, but they always hooked up on the internet and 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 organized local people. Um, there was, a, you know, it's a, a totally different work, but also kind of a, a way activist that this artist uh, was. Uh, 
making art collages and, and, and animated collages. Every, but everything was collected from the internet. Mm -hmm. So did, he didn't create everything. They, he just borrowed and made a co collage of it. And this was about the election. And uh, uh, OK. Now, there is a totally different thing here, which was, um, uh, so artists, yeah, artists use the internet in a wildly different way. And, and uh, this artist, for example, mostly was inter interested from early on that you can transmit things. You know, it sounds funny to you, but it, was, uh, it wasn't, uh, yeah, there, it didn't exist, so yeah. it, that you can see something in real life, uh, a real time, another part of the world. Uh, because, you know, even TV, uh, for a very long time, uh, people don't realize, they didn't, they didn't uh, record the TV programs. Mm. They just, it was just a transmission. But anyway, so this was the idea that anybody can transmit. I mean, even today it appears because there are podcasts, there are these uh, live um, uh, castings. But he was interested in it, how to use it in an, in an artistic way. And, and his idea was actually uh, to make living, um, living uh, landscapes. So we did this exhibition of living landscapes where there was um, uh, from Germany, from text, from the desert, there were, they were basically, you, today you would come them webcams. But what he did is he, he placed these cameras, uh, first video cameras and later uh, film cameras, which would take every three seconds a picture, and, and, and transmit it. So we had a whole gallery everywhere, uh, everywhere uh, these beautiful landscapes coming in from different parts of the world, projected on the wall. And one of them was, uh, was uh, Lower Manhattan. And the, the, uh, and the exhibitions opened uh, September 6, wow. 2011. And, and uh, so, it basically came, became, it's supposed to be a still life, right? A, a, a landscape, and it was, uh, it recorded basically the whole, uh, you know, 9-11 accident, incident, or whatever you call it, or, or, or terrorist uh, act live. It, this is basically the only continuous record of of 9-11 of from the very beginning to a whole month, because this was a whole month exhibition and we decided to keep it up for the whole month and, uh, and it was archived on the internet and it's... Uh, it's, worth, uh, it's worth mentioning. I, um, the, the, the artist's name is Wolfgang Steele, who started actually incidentally the thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Doug, Doug Skublin always says that um, the remarkable thing about 9-11 is that it predates this, right? So after this, if you imagine like every global event, even now, of course, we're getting tick live TikToks from parts of Ukraine, for example, right? So we've moved into uh, a, a, a space of like constant um, uh, recording and archiving of major uh, events, you know. I remember the, like the, the death of Gaddafi, for example, was like brutally recorded, right, by very right. dodgy, low grain, you know. But 9-11, we still, if we had phones, they were basically, it was like a Nokia 3210, it didn't have a camera. Right. So it's like, it's a very interesting, you know, I mean, uh, Zizek or somebody would say, you know, it's the end, it's finally the end of the 20th century and maybe the beginning of the 21st century. But it, it isn't 21st century yet in the sense that the 20, one of the qualities of the 21st century is the fact that we are always documenting everything, no? And right. so there's this, it's interesting therefore that there's an yeah, artwork that documented kind of, that, which, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's, um, I often, it's very interesting because we, I look back to this work and I remember that was how amazing it was and how excited we were about it. And now today it's like, 
totally natural and everybody does that. Well, this is another just uh, a 3D animation. So well, one of the things, one of the other issues of digital art was basically uh, displaying digital, digital art. It's very funny, now, I, I, I hear now that people are asking, so how do you display NFTs? How, yeah. that, 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 you know, and, and people are inventing things and marketing things. But digital art was displayed for 25, 30 years. Uh, from the very beginning, it was an issue, and, and there was amazing installations because uh, one, of the, one of the things what artists discovered very early on, that they, they, when they were uh, starting to part participate in group shows, they basically were in incredibly uh, uh, disadvantaged because everybody had a huge piece and you could walk away and look at it and, 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 it, and, any, and, and crowds of people could look at it at once. And there was the computer, which was basically for a one-to-one -one experience. And uh, a tiny box, and then, you know, even the curators didn't understand it, so they put several works in one computer. So you really couldn't see it. So the artists very early on realized that this is, as this is something they have to deal with. So they started to make installations, projections. They built a, built a space for it and so forth. Uh, and... Uh, and uh, so that was one idea which was, which the artists came up with. And, and we had to come up with something, uh, we had to come up with different solutions how to, how to present uh, uh, digital art because it, uh, because, you know, the, early on, yes, it was a one-to-one -one experience. So how do you translate an, a, a, a private kind of experience to a, to a, to a public experience, so um, so we tried different devices, uh, you know, different interfaces, uh, controls because most of it was was uh, was interactive projections, and and generally the idea was, and I still have this idea, that that you have a, you find for each work uh, its own. Way, of, I mean, mm -hmm. the best way to present it. Yeah. I mean, very often you go now to NFT shows and everything is on one, yeah. one screen. And one of the attempts what I wanted to do here in this show that you know everything is digital, but they, their manifestation is very different. And so, so that was kind of resolved then. And now with today's technology, it's a much wider range. What you can see from the, from you know the VR visors to huge projections, video walls, and so forth. So I don't think. But in it's, a way, it should be a, you do, I feel like mm -hmm. um, you know the things that you've shown us, and unfortunately we've run out of time. But I think what is inspiring to me, anyway, is that it actually felt a lot more diverse yeah. than what we see today. Yeah. You know, there's there's a certain kind of uh, this like teleology that everything mm -hmm. has to either you know just appear on like a flat screen right. it's, it actually feels like a, a narrowing down no, of possibility whereas maybe uh, the things that you showed because uh, you know there's this like Heidegger thing about uh, becoming or Deleuzean thing about becoming over being no, that actually becoming is much more interesting than being so when and and so being uh, in the state of not quite where you were or where you're going to be, but in between, is arguably the most in interesting thing. And that's the spirit I get from a lot of the projects that you showed us. It's this sense that we don't know what it is yet, but and in a sense that um, desire to try and discover what it is articulates itself, but in a very singular way. Whereas now, I mean, it's, it's all about, like, if you think about the iPhone, in a way, the iPhone, you could say, is, a, is an apex of a certain kind of design, but it's also the end of design, right? Because it's like, what do you do after that? Um, we have run out of time, but I will, if there, if there are any burning totally run out kind of, of questions. Just, oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> or you there's one questions. more session. Okay. But if, if there are any questions, if we can wait for the mic, I'll take one or two questions. We get a mic there. If you could stand up, sir, please, so what, what for the video that? camera. What is that? Uh, thank you very much for this, and I appreciate you uh, 
uh, giving us a historical perspective of interaction art and electronic art from the, the 90s, which I think is an important reference to what we're seeing here today. I guess the big question possibly that's on, on my mind, maybe on others, is what's the resale value of much of this work and is it still available for sale? Well, I, I, you know, the, you know, because the the inaccessibility at that time, we, there was cert, a very small market for that. Very few people would buy uh, digital art, and I made an effort in the last last couple of years to collect a lot of this work, and 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 to reintroduce and and basically reintroduce into the uh, the market. So. Uh, 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 it's very funny because uh, because people say, but how do I know? You know, it doesn't have a market, so how do I know what how much it, it's worth? So it's this kind of contradiction that you know, people has a market of you know, uh, uh, I don't know whatever millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars, but these works, which are historical, unique works, uh, and uh, they don't have a a record in the market. So my, my approach to it basically is that we price things like we price artworks uh, uh, comparably to other artworks of the, of the times. And then, uh, I don't know, I, 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 I can't answer you exactly because that's what we do. Our but Tomas, maybe to... to to push that a little bit further, given that these are now his, historic, right. and mo, you know institutions like MoMA or right. maybe other institutions would may are more interested in acquiring them, pre precisely because I mean mm -hmm. they are the history, right. the kind of bit you know the the groundwork of certain kind of digital culture. Mm -hmm. Does that uh, does that begin to create a market? I mean, or uh, now that they're history historic rather than purely contemporary work? Well. I mean, this was my, one of my, my motivations to get into the NFT market yeah. because I thought that this is a, finally a vehicle to, to bring these things for. Uh, uh, and so this kind of platform that I built for Postmasters is, is, is basically half of it is with this historical art. I don't think the focus is yet there, yeah. but my idea was to, to, um, to be, you know, uh, eventually a trusted uh, node yep. in a trustless system. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I, think, I think that the time is pretty close because, because uh, collectors and, uh, will be sophisticated enough to, to start to look for, for you know, historical and, and so more solid art, artworks which are supported by, by uh, you know, uh, 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 a whole um, career of an artist and not of the, you know, and, and uh, so I'm basically waiting a little bit. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's available, but, yeah. but I set the price and, and, sure. and I don't want to, you know, yeah. I don't want to undervalue them because, um, because um, at the end, I, I want, after all, the artists benefit from, from it and not the resale people, and uh, yeah, so that's that's my position yep. basically. That thank that you. I think it will come very soon. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, is there any anybody else? I could take one more. Um, if not, we have uh, we we've gone on for an hour. I just wanted to read uh, something that I think is. Um, uh, relevant here, and it, it, it's something else that Douglas Coupland said. He said, I think the sequence is that technology changes the person, and then those changed persons collectively, consciously, or unconsciously create philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this is also a very like McLuhan notion of feedback, but also feed forward, no? And I think that's, um, that's for, for me, that's what I get really from this amazing kind of, mm -hmm. um, uh, brief, uh, but also I think very rich um, reminder of the fact that um, technology never exists by itself. Mm 
right? It's right. An, always an expression of a certain cultural moment, but also therefore produces new culture at the, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I think, and, and, and as I say, my, our intention was basically to be part of this system. Yeah. That creating culture and then you move it again. And, uh, um, yeah. Tomasz, there, so. there are so many things I could ask you about. <laughs> uh, I did want to get into your Poland years, but we will have to save that for another time because we have okay. to move on to our next session. Yeah. But thank you so much sure. for just, um, introducing us and, 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 and taking us on this journey. Everybody, go, please go see the Postmaster's booth next door. Thank you. Uh, a, a warm round of applause for Tomasz. Thank you. It's... Uh, we are uh, immediately moving on to our final session for the day. Uh, so, Christina, it's over to you.